Hi, my name is Alon Rubin. I'm here with Reverb at King Size Studios in Los Angeles. We're gonna get into some more Stuart Copeland. Earlier we did some stuff on the hi-hat. I'm gonna move it over here to my friend, the bell on the ride cymbal. Copeland, probably most known for his ride stuff or the hi-hat stuff I was showing in a previous lesson. Let's get to it. There's not quite as much detail here because as uh, you'd imagine, the ride cymbal is more reserved for choruses or louder stuff, so the bulk of the Stuart Copeland detail was on the hi-hat. Once again, I'm not gonna be teaching specific parts. This is more of a uh, building block to improvise and do your own Copeland-esque thing, okay? Most popular one is probably a pattern that consists of this. I'm gonna put it in a beat. Now of course, now of course, Copa would never play that beat over and over and over again. Just that is uh, an embellishment of sorts that he would use all over the place. You can hear it in So Lonely, you can hear it in all over the place, okay? I don't even need to go down the list, okay? So beneath that, I'm just gonna play a very basic beat, which is. Doesn't sound anything like Sir Copeland, but that's those are the meat and potatoes beneath what we're going to be doing on the, the the ride. Okay, so let's play it. Okay, what should be pointed out here is that all of those accents on the bell are linking up with the bass drum, note for note, with the exception of one. Okay, so let's break down a little bit slower and see what I'm talking about. At that tempo, sounds nothing like Sir Copeland. Speed it up. Speed it up even faster, which he would do all the time live, even from verse to chorus. Okay, instant Copeland. The next one, which is slightly more intricate, is we'll take a very similar beat but uh, we're gonna add a little bit to the bell, right? So I'll give it to you at a reasonable tempo and then we'll slow it down. Okay, for this example, we're changing the beat slightly. Okay, just for the sake of examples. Not Copeland at all, add the ride. So what we're doing there is, rather than doing the, the two notes before and after the snare, on the end of that, we're gonna be sneaking in a little 16th in there. Okay, so if we were to play that very slowly, just um, as a slow groove, forget Copeland, just think about it like this. start speeding that up and you get that Copeland flavor. Okay, so as I showed you with the hi-hat stuff, let's take those two examples in themselves and start combining them. And the bass drum and snare, well the snare needs to be consistent. The bass drum does not need to be consistent. Do whatever you want. As I said, they often lock together, meaning the bell and the bass drum. Very often he's gonna be doing those accents and further emphasizing them with the bass drum. So I'm just gonna go ahead and jam with those two ideas and you can kind of see how I uh, invert them or stack them against each other differently. I'll do it at a you know, mid-up tempo and then I'll speed it up for that extra Copeland juice, if you will. So here we go. Very Copeland, let's do it even faster. There you go, okay. So, as an exercise, what I would like for you to do if you wanna really experiment with what you can do there 
I want you to take a very straight beat, okay? As straight as it can be of just I always encourage you to keep time on the hi-hat as well. And I want you to treat the bell as a lead instrument. By doing the straight bass drum and snare on the backbeat, that should enable you to just forget about everything else your body's doing and just focus on what your right hand or left hand is doing on the bell, however you play. So here's what I mean. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna do a rhythm where, for example, I'm gonna play something like this, just on the right. Keep that melody or rhythm in mind, okay? But I say melody because I think there's a lot of uh, melodic elements to Copeland's playing between the dynamics and the syncopation of everything we do. So I see his style as very melodic. So keep that in mind, ba, 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 over that. Sounds very Copeland-esque. Let's add some of those uh, little added 16s to add some speed to it. Very Copeland. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and mix all that up and uh, show you what I mean, how you can kind of turn these things around and come up with your own things. I mean, really, I think that's the point of learning other people's material, not so that you can regurgitate it back exactly as it was played, because it was already done. Take it, learn from it, and apply it to your own thing. I know I've done it with all my favorites, so I'm just gonna think fast, Copeland-esque bell stuff, and here's what that would sound like. So hopefully that illustrates everything I've taught you and uh, good luck with it. I'm sure I'll be teaching you some stuff some other time because we've just had a great time today. So uh, once again, my name's Alon Rubin. Hopefully you learned something from this. Have a good one. <laughs>